Kyle Klingman with Track Wrestling. We have a two-time NAIA wrestling champion. Brandon Reed wrestles at Lindsey Wilson, but just because he's NAIA doesn't mean that he's one of, not one of the best in the nation because he is one of the best in the nation. Brandon, I appreciate you taking this time. Appreciate you having me on. I love your story. You're from Louisville, Kentucky. You got started late in the sport. How did you finally find it? I, I tried to play football, and uh, the defensive coordinator, coordinator uh, Gary Cole, he was like, oh, the head coach doesn't really want you to play football anymore. You want to join my wrestling team? And I was like, all right, I guess. <laughs> Why not? I have nothing better to do. So uh, Coach Cole invited me. I, I basically got kicked off the football team because I, I just was lazy. And I mean, I really didn't have a right to go. And Coach Cole was like, it can help you change and help. I was really overweight too. So it was like, you really need to lose weight and this, this will help a lot. So it's like, all right, I'm gonna try wrestling out. That was basically the beginning of it. Did you take some lumps right away? Yeah, my first season I was two and 14. So I, I was, it was pretty disgusting. I was, uh, I was getting beat up and I was, it was just torture, man. I got pinned by the same guy like six times that year. Pretty sad to be honest, but I don't know. I loved it too at the same time because I was losing a lot of weight. So that was nice. What made you love it? If you're going two and 14, what keeps you coming back for more? Uh, I, it was the first time I had like a, a team because I never played sports before um, high school. So it was the first time I had a team. So I felt like I finally had like a group. And uh, also my confidence was starting to get built because I was losing a lot of weight. I was 265 pounds when I started high school and really big. And by the time like the season actually came around, I had already lost about 40 pounds and was like 225, 220-ish wrestling. Too. So I just, it was making me more confident and I had, I was making friends. So those are the two big reasons. Was there something that led to you turn the corner and making gains? My, my team captains, they were like, they're two Russian guys and, and Sarn Samim. And they were just always like back home in Russia. We always lifted weights. Like we wrestle and lift weights. And I was like, all right, you guys seem pretty cool and legit. And they're my team captains. So I was like, I'm just going to do what they're doing. So they started, I started lifting with them, doing like privates with them, stuff like that. And then I started to get a little bit better. What was the timeline? I think you had a head coach and then he left and you had another head coach and you maybe moved with them. Take us through that chronology. Right. Uh, yeah, I had a head, that, that defensive coordinator guy, he was my head coach for the first two years of my wrestling career. So freshman and sophomore year of, of high school. And then um, he retired and we got a new coach, um, which uh, I guess uh, his name is Tom. And uh, he, uh, he was a really great coach, really awesome. And for my junior year, we, we got really connected and we just, he supported me a lot because my parents couldn't be there or whatever because they're always working and stuff. So he was, he kind of like became like a dad to me like in that year. And he, had, he said he needed to move because he wanted to be in a better city for his, his newborn son. And uh, he offered me to come to live with him my senior year of high school and I went and lived with them and that's how that went. Was that tough being away from your family? Uh, not really. I, I felt like uh, the reason it wasn't tough was because my mom like genuinely just supports me. So if she, if she sees that there's an opportunity for me to the, just get better and get out, I was in a really a pretty bad area of Louisville. So it was like a good opportunity for me to just be in a better environment and to be around like a father figure because I, I didn't have a dad. So he, he was kind of my first like adult male figure, like I, I would say so. Yeah. What did he do for you? What kind of things did he impart into you? Man, everything. He gave me my first job. It was cutting grass for him. He, uh, he has a little lawn, lawn service. Uh, he taught me how to drive. Um, he basically taught me to just like do for myself, and uh, man, he taught me dieting. I know that's I know doesn't seem like a father thing. I don't know, but he taught me how to diet well. He he taught me how to. I don't really know. He he helped me gain like self discipline and extreme ownership. I guess like that's what he touts around all the time at the house. Like you know, he loves Jocko. I love Jocko. Stuff like that. Just 
just extreme ownership being the thing and, you know, just picking yourself up when you're tired and kind of like doing things that suck. And he, he is a, he was an MMA fighter and he does jujitsu now still. And he's just a get after it type of guy. So I guess I learned a lot from him to just keep me in after it. You said you grew up without a father. Was that a void for you? Was it just commonplace or normal? Is it something that you wanted at some point in your life? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd say it was pretty much a void, to be honest. And I didn't really realize it at first until I met Coach McKenna, the guy that I live with now. And uh, I don't know. It's like uh, my mom's amazing, and she's done everything for me. She's awesome. And I wouldn't take away, like, my experience with her. But it's definitely, like, it was definitely weird, like, living with him. And now I've been living with him, him for a few years and just, like, seeing like the type of things that I, I was able to learn from him. And uh, maybe that I felt, and I don't know, because like I said, I never had a dad, but I feel like I have now that connection that I never had uh, with someone like in that role. So it, yeah, definitely was kind of a void, or at least now I feel like it was a void. How'd you find your way to Lindsey Wilson? Uh, good question. Um, so long ago, man. But uh, I guess after I transferred my uh, junior year, I hadn't really placed in any tournaments. I mean, I placed at Fargo for Greco, placed fourth, but no one really recruited because it was, I don't know, I guess they weren't interested. And then uh, it was just the middle of my senior year and I just was not being recruited by anybody like at all. And uh, a school called Campbellsville a few miles away was starting to recruit me pretty heavily. And uh, they were awesome. They were really cool. It was actually like, it was going to be my choice. But then right at like the last minute before I was going to choose Campbellsville, I met Lindsey Wilson and uh, the coaches there. And both schools have pretty awesome coaches. And I don't know, I just, uh, I felt like I could relate to the Lindsey Wilson scene a lot more uh, than I could to Campbellsville. Both are really great schools, but uh, the Lindsey Wilson coaches just, they just, I don't know, they had it. Like the, when they talked to me, they had that little crazy that I like and that, that was kind of used to. So that's, uh, that's what made me come here. But I really only had two options. So it was, it was Camels or Lindsey and Lindsey got me. Fourth at the NAI championships, your freshman year, and then you won the last two years just in watching a whole bunch of your footage, you have a great style, entertaining style. You picked it up pretty quick. How did you expedite the process so you got good real fast? Uh, man, wrestling with people who are a lot better than me. Like uh, in high school, I, like I said, when I lived with Coach McKenna, uh, I couldn't wrestle my senior season because of transfer rules in Kentucky. So instead I went and trained with a guy named John Lampy. He wrestled at the uh, at Chattanooga and uh, he was a few time national qualifier. and. Uh, he was really good, like especially for the level that I was on. He was so good, and most of my style came from how he wrestled because every like every other day I would go wrestle with him, and we'd do the same thing. We just drill and drill and drill and drill. And it was before that year I had never just drilled that much and drilled that freely too. Like it, like I don't know. Uh, he was really loose, and he just had a good feel, and he helped me find my own feel. So. Uh, I was lucky to be around him and Coach Knable, who was an Indi uh, Indiana wrestler, uh, who's actually Spatola's, one of Spatola's uh, teammates and roommate, I guess. I didn't know that until recently. Um, just wrestling with those guys, like going to clubs and just wrestling with a bunch of different people I never wrestled with before. And they, they helped me. And I, there's never heavyweights in Kentucky to wrestle with. So I kind of got used to wrestling with like 82 pounders, 95 pounders in high school and it helped me pick my feet up a little bit more. You mentioned Sp Spatola, Spatola Wrestling Club, headed by Nick Spatola. You've gone up there and you've wrestled a guy named Mason Paris quite often. Yeah. You go against him. Do you feel like, hey, I can go with these Division One guys? Do you get that feel? Man, I always feel that way. Like, uh, Mason kicks my butt, man. He does, to be honest. And I feel like I kick his butt sometimes. And I, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm like a guy who's pretty confident. And so whether I'm wrestling Mason or someone else, like, I feel like I can beat anybody, whether, whether it's Mason, Gwiz, Gable, I don't really care. Like, I'm, that's why I love training with Mason, because 
he thinks he can beat me and I think I can beat him. And so when we wrestle, you know, we, we go all out, like we take each other out and he get, he presents like a really top level feel for me. And whenever I I'm successful in positions, I feel like, oh man, I can, I can wrestle with the better guys. Like, and uh, he helps me learn so much. So yeah, I definitely feel I can wrestle with anybody for sure. What do you want to accomplish here going into your senior season at Lindsey Wilson? Uh, I want to be most outstanding wrestler at nationals. I've ne that's never happened for me. And uh, for me to do that, I definitely have to open it up. And uh, that's one of the reasons I trained with Mate, wanted to train with Mason is I, I just need to be scoring bonus points. And I, just, I want to score bonus points in every single match. And uh, yeah, being most outstanding wrestler, of course, I want to win nationals. That's always the goal. But number one thing is I want, I want to score bonus points. I want to like, I want to separate myself from the field as much as possible. After college, it sounds like you're going to go to Japan. What are you going to do there? I'm teaching English. I'm teaching English. My girlfriend lives up there. Uh, the girl I've been with her almost three years. And uh, she works up there. And I, I've been practicing Japanese for almost four years. So I want to live there and just pro probably settle down there. And hopefully, like I said, hopefully wrestle a few tournaments. I really love jujitsu also. So I plan to like once I've shut my wrestling career down, I'll, I'll go full time into doing jujitsu, and uh, hopefully I can start that up after after this is done. Are you gonna be there for the Olympic Games? I hope so, man. Coronavirus is scaring me, dude. Uh, I'm not. Who knows? But uh, crossing our fingers, I I will be there. I'll definitely be there if if I'm allowed to go. <laughs> can anyone on the Lindsey Wilson campus give you a go? Yes, Trevor Lawson. His uh, he's our, our 197 pounder. Uh, he's from Ohio. He's a beast. I think he's ranked second in the country right now. He's a freaking boss, man. Like he beats me sometimes. The other day we had two matches and he beat me six to one, and then I beat him four to three. So it was he is a beast, and uh, he's gonna win nationals this year. I'm 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 really confident in, in him, and uh, yeah. That, that's the guy. What's the Lindsey Wilson wrestling culture like? It's hardcore. It's lots of grindy wrestling. It's it's pretty – like, uh, if I was going to compare it to a Division One team, like when you like you look at, like, the videos and stuff of D1, I would say, like, Iowa-ish. Lots of hand fighting, lots of drilling. But there's also – it's it's pretty hardcore, to, to be quite honest. And uh, I know it's a little old-fashioned, but uh, – I love it. It's it's what brought me to Lindsay, and uh, the coaches are very uh, you know no BSing. They're very honest and straightforward, but they're loving too, and they pat you on the butt when you do good stuff. But I don't know. They it's a it's an awesome culture, and the team just says like the team we love each other. You know, it's like any wrestling team. Um, there's problems, and then there's there, but overall, like we feel like if I feel like we're a family, and those are my brothers, and I'm sure they feel the same way about me. Being from Louisville, there's the Muhammad Ali Museum. Do you know much about his career and his legacy? Uh, yeah, Olympic champ. Everyone knows about him throwing his medal into the Ohio River, right? And uh, outside of his like civil rights stuff, I don't I don't know much other than like obviously the Olympic champ and the civil rights movement, like what he was pushing for. But I know like they say he's the greatest athlete from Louisville, so. I'd, I definitely would say that's probably true. Is that a big deal there, the Muhammad Ali Museum? Did you get the vibe oh, people came? Yeah, man, that's a freaking – that's a huge deal. The, I think it's closed right now because of all the stuff that's going on. But, uh, yeah, it's a super huge deal. I've been to it a million times, like pr probably at least a million times I've been there just because of, like, uh, school trips, prom, stuff like that is Muhammad Ali Museum. So I love that place. So you had prom there? Yep, one year. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but prom's everywhere now, man. I don't know why, I just that's what they decided to do.